Coming up today on Houston Life, in honor of Veterans Day, a look back at a spotlight of a local World War II veteran who proves the sky's the limit. Hear his inspiring story and how he's building and flying planes at 97 years young. Then a look at a show that's captivated audiences for years. Cirque du Soleil is back at Sam Houston Race Park. We're going to give you a sneak peek at this unforgettable experience, perfect for the whole family. Plus, are you still looking for Thanksgiving dessert ideas? Well, you are in luck. Cookbook author Joy the Baker shares her easy pumpkin trifle recipe, sure to impress everyone at your table. And Moody Gardens is ready for the holidays. A look at their holiday attractions that make it one of the largest holiday destinations in Texas. All of that and more happening today on Houston Life. Live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Houston Life. It is Thursday, November 11th, Veterans Day 2021. I'm Derek Shore. And I'm Courtney Savala. Happy Veterans Day. A big thank you to those who have served and who continue to serve our country today. And, uh, and a wonderful day to pause and really thank our servicemen and women. Yeah, 11-11. And I know you have uh, family members you want to give a shout out to. Absolutely. Of course, my brother, my brother Bob, uh, he is a Marine Corps veteran, served um, in the Gulf War, and um, he is such an unbelievable guy. I mean, he documents everything, a hardworking dad. Um, but this is something he always wanted to do. You know, my brother graduated from college, University of Arizona, and then enlisted in the Marines. And that was what he wanted to do wow, for his entire so cool. life. Um, and my dad as well uh, was is an Army veteran as well. So thank you both to them to, for their service. How old is your dad now, 90 plus? 90 plus. 90 plus, yes. yeah. Going strong. I know. And my grandfather served at Hickam Airfield. There he is right there. This is my mom's dad, Shirley Willard Nichols uh, was his name. We lost him about 30 years ago. But this was between World Wars uh, One and Two, so he was there in Hawaii. And then, of course, my mom, Bobby Sharon Nichols Shore. Bobby, my mom, is named after Uncle Bob, her Uncle Bob, uh, who served in the Navy and was actually a, a diver uh, bringing up the deceased wow. after the bombing at Pearl Harbor. So our family members were uh, definitely pausing to, to thank them and you know Houston businesses today they are saying thank you to our veterans you're looking right now at click to houston.com there's a full list of freebies and discounts for veterans all over town it's great to see these businesses uh, step up and and give a little something back absolutely and that's from food to uh, I saw on their uh, Apple and all kinds of things it, what's great though is just seeing people um, with their service maybe hats or shirts on I always try to say thank you to somebody even if it's not on Veterans Day yeah same. Um, because I don't think they hear it enough and it's a, the ultimate sacrifice but that full article go check it out and maybe send it over to somebody that you know that is served and serving so it's really great yeah it's a great way to just show our support and our love earlier on our Facebook page we did ask you to send in some images of the veterans in your life and I think it's time now to share a few so Jill Rankin Daniel sent in her photo of her parents this is at uh, San Diego the Navy base in 1944 what an incredible Incredible photo. I'm, that that's so great that you shared it with us. That is so awesome. I love that. And Michelle McKee Grissom shares these photos of her dad. This is Ronald Eugene McKee, who served in the Navy. Very, very nice. And Carla is giving a shout out to four service members in her family, her dad, brother, sister-in-law, and their son. So thank you to all of our servicemen and women. Keep sending in your shout outs so we can share more of them throughout today's show. That is right. So you had a busy night last night, huh? Oh, yeah. City Book. You know City Book. You've, you've seen him on magazine stands. They just celebrated their fifth anniversary. Hard to believe. This was at La Column Door there on Montrose, one of our favorite spots. It was so fun seeing uh, friends, old and new, some very familiar faces. Uh, there's Jeff Gremion there on the left who started the magazine, Lisa Holthouse on the right who's the publisher. But so many people came up and said to say hi to you, Courtney. There's our friend Lauren Anderson, prima ballerina age. from the Houston Ballet. 
her, you know, her gorgeous. Holly Schuzer in the Smithsonian. You know, no big, no big deal. deal. She's working on a book right now. Also saw Cam Franklin from The Suffers, Paige Parks. A whole bunch of people said to say hi. Oh, I love that. What a beautiful evening to be outside, too. It was lovely. A lovely evening and a beautiful magazine. It's awesome. They've made it five years. It's not an easy thing to be in the magazine business these days. Absolutely not. So go support them for sure. And congratulations on five years as well. So, you know, this is my, this is my happy time. You also had a busy night. I had a busy night. And so last night was the preview of the Nutcracker Market. Um, this is my friend Crystal. Uh, our boys are exactly the same age, so I've known we've known each other since. Oh, perfect. Connor and her oldest son Christian were in kindergarten. Look who else we ran into, <gasps> Miss Linda, Linda Laurel, looking fabulous yeah. as ever. Her husband Lou was there, and this is Harry. Harry works over at NRG Park, and Harry's a big watcher of the show. Aww. He was at one of the food stations, and What's we had that, a nice Harry? chat. Very, very cool guy. He said to say hello to you. And look who else I ran into. Oh my gosh, is that Anthony Giannis right there and his yes. wife? Rebecca, yes. Yeah, so I haven't seen Becky since she got back, since they moved into town. It was lovely to see them. And I said to Anthony, oh, my word, you are like husband of the year. Orlando would not would not be here. <laughs> but Anthony said he loved it. So, they, you know, we had a quick catch up. It was lovely to see both of them. And then, of course, you know, viewers. Now, pay attention to these photos. <laughs> your, are your eyes? Well, Pat's looking one way. I think my eyes are closed. We took a second photo. Okay. That's, and oh, Pat's no. eyes are closed. Oh, no. But you want to hear something crazy. So Pat and I walked <laughs> past each other, and she said, I'm sorry. I just need to tell you, I feel like we're best friends. And I said, well, we can be. Let's, let's be friends. And Pat said, I'm from um, Beverly, which is the, the town neighboring where I grew up. You're in kidding. Chicago. She worked at Marshall Fields along with you, Mom. Eileen's watching from an actual television today, not just from her iPhone. Uh, yeah, here in Houston. So she's Hi, home. Uh, she's at the house. Um, and sh and I said, well, I, you know, I went to college in, in Beverly. I went to San Xavier University. She goes, I know. That's why I'm telling you. She worked at Marshall Fields. She said, I, I, all of these things, I feel like if we must have seen each other in our lives. But she lives here in Houston now. Wow. So Pat Roach, I did remember your, can you believe I remembered both names? Uh, yeah, first and last? Yes, that's impressive. Miracle. I mean, I, it was, it's right here now, but uh, she's a viewer, but from the south side of Chicago, and we finally met in person, but we have very similar backgrounds. It's crazy. Talk about worlds colliding right? in so many different ways. I know. Next time, we're going to take a better picture. Hopefully, the picture on your camera is better than the two that I have. Love it, Pat. <laughs> we'll be at the market tomorrow, so I'll, I'll take another photo of this I know. Video. Come say hi. That's right. We are going to be out. I cannot wait to get to my happy place. Still to come, the holiday request. The queen is asking the whole royal family to take part in. It's, I may start this tradition. All right. It sounds delightful. <laughs> Plus, Lauren Kelly is live at Moody Gardens this afternoon with a look at all the holiday deals and attractions we can enjoy. Hey, Lauren. Welcome back. Okay, so Thanksgiving, hopefully you don't have plans. I'd like to invite you and Brandon over Thanksgiving dinner. But before and after, there's going to be a weigh-in. I'm going to need you to step on the scale. We're going to need a starting weight and an ending weight. Can I respectfully <laughs> decline? No, it's rude. That <laughs> I'm rude. I know, right? This is You want to weigh your guests? Right. This is a royal family tradition, y'all. The queen, the queen mum, is passing along this tradition. This dates back actually to the 1900s with King Edward VIII. But apparently this came to light in Spencer, the latest movie about Diana and the royal family and all of these things. Are you being you can, totally for real? I am being totally for real. There's a scene in the movie where you could see the staff polishing the royal scales before a holiday meal. This is true. Now they ask the guests to step on the scale to get your starting weight, because if you really enjoyed the meal, you gained at least five pounds. Because if you didn't, then you really didn't like what, what you had in front of you. Doesn't this make the guests feel, I don't know, strange? Uh, yes, I'm sure it does. It seems a bit awkward, right? I'm sure it does. How do we know this is actually a tradition they've been doing? No, this, this dates back to, you know, sort of like a royal expert who went on the record and said, yes, this is, this is what's been happening. It dates back to the 1900s. And th this was, it's not an insult. It really is for a way to say, I oh, loosen the pants. I ate too much. I gained five pounds. Proof is in the scale. Can you imagine, though, you go home to, like, family Thanksgiving dinner and there's a scale right. for everyone to step on? Or here's the thing. What if when Connor and AJ bring home a girl for the first time and it happens to be Thanksgiving dinner and I'm like, hey, <laughs> it's 
Step on the scale, little thing. Let me see how much you weigh. Now let's eat. Hang on, you're done eating? Let's weigh you again. Could you imagine? I feel so uncomfortable right now. <laughs> it's not my tradition, boo. It's not mine. I'm just telling you about it. But it was supposed to be a good thing. Wow. I know. Bizarre. This falls <laughs> under the category of bizarre family traditions. It sure does. It sure does. Wow. Well, thank you for sharing. You are so that welcome. Was, why don't we bring in Joe Sam, <laughs> check out his thoughts, and also get our question of the day. Hey, Joe. Yeah, I think I'll be afraid to eat now. Right? I know. Going to people's places, getting weighed now. That's crazy. Of course, we have some crazy things coming in right now. We're asking you, what's family? What's from your family tradition that you would say would surprise others? And this is traditions that we have coming in. Those surprises are shocking me too, as I'm reading them right now. We have them coming in. Robin, she writes, December 5th, St. Nick Day. You put one of your shoes outside. Get this, you guys. Mm -hmm. Your front door, and you'll either get a little gift or a piece of coal. So if you get the coal, that means you have 20 days to do better. Oh, I've never like heard that. of this yeah. before. Oh yeah, it's, it's like St. a progress Nick report. Day. I've yeah. never heard of this. This cool. is news to me. Okay, we got Rose. She writes in for the. The last several years, we no longer do the turkey and ham. My kids make their food requests and I make them. We have done steaks, lasagna, barbecue, burgers. I no longer have 50 containers of leftovers in the fridge. Okay. Wow. Yeah. It's like a whole buffet at Rose's house. Yeah, I love it. I want to be there. Lynn, she writes in chicken and dressing for Thanksgiving. Chicken, not turkey. <laughs> Ch chicken, okay. not turkey. The chicken is in the dressing. My, what is this here? My mother meals? Mother-in-law. My mother-in-law? I've never, I'm learning a lot of That's new okay. things today. Recipe that took decades to get close to her. So her mother-in-law came up with this here. These are all new to me. Surprises that I have never heard of before. Head over to our Houston Life Facebook page. Join that conversation and we'll share more of your comments later in the show. I like these, though. And I, I have a new term for mother-in-law. Yes, that's right, <laughs> a little shortened one. And also, one of the things when I was researching the queen and the royals and all that, there's another tradition of, like, hiding a pickle in a tree or something. Oh. And that I... So someone gave me a, uh, a pickle ornament, and I didn't oh, know what it was. We have a pickle ornament hanging on our tree at home. I didn't What's know it was pickle. To, well, first one to find it gets an extra gift or gets to er open a gift early. Okay, we do things different in Louisiana. I've never heard of any of this before. <laughs> I know. I didn't either. I didn't know where it was. But Craig Melvin uh, from the Today Show yeah. talked about it today, that that's a tradition in his family. Uh, not a real pickle, just to clarify. Oh, just an ornament one. <laughs> I don't recommend that. All right, y'all. Oh. Thank you for that. All yes, indeed. Good stuff. <laughs> Smell of it, you know. All right, another holiday tradition, of course. Moody Gardens is ready for the holiday season, and with eight holiday attractions all under one venue, it's one of the largest holiday destinations in Texas and one of our favorites. Oh, my gosh, I've taken my mom down. It's so much fun. And from the Festival of Lights Trail to plenty of opportunities to meet Santa, Lauren Kelly is giving us a look at all the holiday deals Moody Gardens has to offer. Lauren, uh, with one of our favorites, Jerry Hamachuk. You guys, look, Halloween comes around and goes away, and then guess what? It's Christmas time, and I am okay with it. Look at this lobby here at Moody Gardens. It's absolutely beautiful already, and we are so ready for the holidays. Of course, Marketing Director of Moody Gardens, Sherry Hamachek, you're such a great person to have on because you have so much great information. We've got to tell our viewers today about all the holiday attractions happening here at Moody Gardens this year. This is our 20th year for Festival of Light, so we've been celebrating in a grand way, and it just gets better and better every year. So holiday in the gardens means we've got a whole lot of things going on. Festival of Lights, we've got an Arctic slide, we have 3D movies with seven different films that are showing there. We've got Rudolph 4D, we've got train rides, we also have all of our other attractions. So you can enjoy a walk along the Festival of Lights Trail, it takes you along uh, the bay here, it's a beautiful view. You can enjoy some hot chocolate, you can enjoy all the music that's there, and all kinds of holiday lights. We've mentioned this before, it's like a getaway without even realizing you're only going 45 minutes down I-45 South. Really, truly, it's so close. And there are awesome deals that are on the website as well if you'd like to stay here at the Movie Gardens Hotel. Yes, yeah, so there's enough to do here, um, daytime and in the evening. So. We've got some great packages at the Moody Gardens Hotel. We also have value days. So if you look at our website, you can get a holiday pass to the attractions for $39, but it's $29 on value nights. We also have great hotel packages 
on value nights too. So Wonderful. choose what you want to do and enjoy dinner. Yeah, pick here. your own package. I like that. That's <laughs> the way to go. Moodygardens.org for more info, but don't go anywhere because a little bit later on the show, we've got a jolly old man who's going to come be a little special guest and tell us how the kiddos can take pictures with Santa. It's Santa. Derek and Courtney, back to you guys in the studio. Lauren, we love it. Golfing, Santa, great food, one-stop shop. We'll see you in just a bit. When we come back, one veteran's journey home, how Goodwill Houston helped him land his dream job. And Joe Sam got to check out an exciting event the whole family will enjoy. This is a good one, Joe. Yeah, I enjoyed it myself. Coming up, I'm giving you a little preview of Cirque du Soleil, Algeria, coming to Sam Houston Race Park this weekend. It's super exciting. Stay right there. Houston Life will be right back. Veterans sometimes face challenges after returning home from military service. And at Goodwill Houston, they believe simply finding a job shouldn't be one of those challenges. Joining us now is Goodwill's Barbie Parker, along with U.S. Army veteran Pedro Castillo. Perfect timing on this Veterans Day, Pedro. And first of all, thank you for your service. Thank you. You're welcome. So you spent four years in the Army, honorably discharged in 2012. Describe to us your return home. What were some of the challenges you had? Well, uh, first of all, I want to thank all the veterans uh, for their service and their sacrifice. Um, and to answer your question, um, it definitely was challenging getting back into civilian life, uh, seeing how civilian sector, how things operate. Um, it was just it was just hard, really embracing that again. And so that was that was just one of the challenges. Um, PTSD takes different forms and different shapes, um, but yeah. And we Definitely. know, Pedro, that y your experience is, is typical, right? I mean, the transition back into c civilian life is something we know a lot of people can struggle with. How did Goodwill end up helping you? So uh, Goodwill actually helped me out by, give, uh, first of all, giving me the opportunity to teach a program here at Goodwill, the apartment maintenance program. Um, that helps out a lot with when I'm able to interact with the guys, the students in the class setting, and I'm able to actually connect with them um, with their struggles. So just knowing that I'm able to give back, uh, that's helping me. And also, Dave uh, Goodwill is able to provide resources in times of need and in times of desperation and facing any hardship. Um, Good Goodwill has definitely been there in my corner. So you've been able to serve as a mentor. I understand that you've also partnered with Goodwill Houston to actually teach individuals how to become certified apartment, apartment maintenance professionals. Yes, yes. Well, that is fantastic. Barbie, uh, turning over to you now. I mean, we've had you on the show so many times. And just tell us about the commitment that Goodwill Houston has to our veterans. Yes, definitely, Derek. Thank you so much for um, having us on your show today. Goodwill Houston, we serve all everyone, but especially veterans. Like like Pedro, he was coming back into the to civilian life, and that's very difficult. And so we help them, all veterans, get back onto their feet. You know, some resume training, other tools and techniques that um, veterans need and everyone needs to get back into the workforce. And you know, I just want to echo what Pedro said. Thank you so much to all of our veterans. We would not be where we are today as a country without each of you and your families and all of their sacrifices. Yes. And we're so grateful for you, Pedro, and we're very blessed that he's part of Goodwill Houston. And you know, when, when you shop and donate at Goodwill Houston, you are helping to change lives just like Pedro's life. Well, yes. that is fantastic. And when we talk about uh, Barbie job training and placement, uh, we just talked about apartment maintenance. There are many different training programs, right, that Goodwill offers? Yes. yes, we have multiple programs and they are all listed on our website at goodwillhouston.org. And we also, you know, youth programs, all so many different programs to help a gamut of people. Well, Pedro, any thoughts for someone out there who maybe is feeling a little bit stuck, perhaps feeling like you did after you were discharged and you were wondering what's next with your life? Because I know that was a frustrating time. Yeah. Um my advice is uh, definitely reach out uh, to your community. Uh, 
a lot of people don't really know about the programs that Goodwill has to offer. Just going into one of the stores, you'll definitely find out about all the different programs that they have. Um, the dark road, whatever anybody's facing, it doesn't, it doesn't have to necessarily be dark, but any rough patch, um, there's definitely um, es you know escapes, positive escapes and alternatives for you to ch uh, change your life around. And I'm, I'm glad and able to be, that I'm able to be a part of that community that's able to reach out and help change people's lives here at Goodwill. Well, Pedro, I'm glad to see you doing so well. Thank you so much for your time and thank you again for your service. Thank you. And Barbie Parker, thanks to you and Goodwill as well for all you do for our community. If you, you or someone you know could benefit from the services offered at Goodwill Houston, head to goodwillhouston.org or call 713-692-6221. Now let's send things over to Joe, who's getting a first look at the Cirque du Soleil show that just rolled into town. Hey, Joe. Hey, Derek. That's right. Cirque du Soleil is known as the largest contemporary circus producer in the entire world, debuting its first show in 1990 in Las Vegas. Since since then, it's been traveling all around the world, entertaining audiences of all ages. I went behind the scenes of its iconic show you can see here at Aglia before it hit Sam Houston Race Park to see why this experience is one you won't forget. If you're looking for an unforgettable experience, this is the place to be. We are at Cirque Soleil and we cannot wait to talk all about it because this is gonna be something for the family to enjoy. Francis, you are the man with all of the information that we need. Tell us about the show because it's been going on for so long and people are excited that it's here in Houston. Absolutely, the show is called Alegria. It's one of the most iconic Cirque du Soleil productions. It has toured the world for over 19 years, mm. but now we've brought it into a newer version. Um, so we put it into the context of today. So it has amazing acrobatics, lavish costumes, set designs that will blow your mind away. You're in for a treat for the whole family. Why is this something that people love to see every single year and why is it something that you make sure you put on to entertain the crowd? Because Cirque du Soleil, no one else does what we do. We bring amazing acrobatic acts but we set them into the context of theater. So for two hours and a half you come under the big top, you forget about your reality and you dream with us. And we're under the big top right now. You can see the stage behind us. It is a beautiful set but also what's going to be beautiful are the performances performances, which is what we're about to get into right now. You got some performers that I can speak to, right? Yes, you'll do a bit of trapeze, a bit of trampolining. Oh. We can't wait to see how good you are at it. All right, let's get going. Come on down. What's the hardest part in making this all happen? Because I'm sure it takes a lot of training that goes into this. Yeah, it definitely takes a lot of training. But the hardest part, I would say, is, of course, the consistency. Because we, well, we have nine to ten shows a week, uh, and we want to perform every show. Like, it's, it's, it's one of the most important shows, so we want to be every day at our best. All right, Nikolai, so you showed me some tricks on here. How did you think I did? Uh, I think you have, uh, you, have, you have a lot of potential, I would say. <laughs> I, I, I can be in the show. You think I can be in the show a little? Yeah, just probably some more, a couple more years. A couple more days of training and then maybe we'll get you there. <laughs> Talk about your performance. It was a bit of a challenge because you have to retrain your brain and body to do these tricks, never mind just putting the show together as a whole. Well, I was three years old, my mom and dad always did gymnastics and I started in a little local gymnastic club and when I was 10 I started doing competitions, gymnastics and I did a lot of different kind of gymnastics and I always just hang on to it and I feel joy every time I came to training. What do you want people to walk away with after seeing Alex here? <laughs> just smile on their faces and full of joy. So maybe I'm not ready to do a show just yet, but we can definitely come and watch it, especially if you're looking for a truly unforgettable experience. Oh yeah, definitely have to go out there and check this show out. The first show kicks off this Saturday and will run until January 2nd. For ticket information, I have a link on our website, HoustonLife.tv. Now, Courtney and Derek, I heard that you guys checked out the show too. Wasn't it fun? Oh, it's all, you know what? Cirque du Soleil puts it on top notch. Mm -hmm. You feel like you visited another planet after every show. This photo you're seeing on the screen right now, there's all of us, Courtney. Yes. Ryan and your family. Aww. And this was last year. This was right before COVID. Alegria had just opened in Houston. And then, of course, they had to temporarily close down. So we are so glad to have it back. And Courtney, you and I got a little sneak peek of their previous show, Luzia. Ooh. Yes, this is in Mexico City. <laughs> yeah, because Mexico City was the last stop before coming to Houston. So seeing behind the scenes, 
gave me, and I know you too, Courtney, yes. and you too probably, mm -hmm. Joe, just a new appreciation for just how incredible these performers really are. From laundry to mealtime to makeup, I mean, yes, it's because of our minds. And they do their own makeup. Yes, and the strength that it takes to hold yourself up on all of these different things. And most of their performances are like six minutes long. Yes. I couldn't even do it for a couple of seconds. So well, you did great. Extremely and I don't know hard. if y'all caught it, but he tried to do a flip. You, I mean, it was good. You actually flipped. It was very good. I'm very proud of we you. We tried that at least 20 times before we got that shot. It doesn't matter. It does, you got the shot. That's right. <laughs> well, our calendars are definitely marked to go see the show. I I'll be wait. there with you guys. Good okay. stuff. Thanks, okay. Joe. Absolutely. And when we come back, how a local World War II veteran is helping others reach for the skies with his unique ultralight aircraft. And we'll get a check of what's coming up for KPRC 2 News at 4 o'clock, including a look at how Houstonians are honoring our local vets. That's when Houston Life returns in just two minutes. Welcome back to Houston Life on this Friday Eve. Courtney and Derek back with you at 3.30. Glad to have you with us as always. Now let's get more of your comments on today's question of the day. We asked, what is one of your family traditions that might surprise others? Carla, I love this. I'm taking notes. We do the four gifts Christmas. Each person gets one thing they want, need, wear, and read. That's Takes great. the pressure off for tons of gifts for each person. Everyone fills out a Christmas list with four options for each category so you don't know what you're getting. I love that, Carla. That is awesome. Rachel writes in, waiting on my mother's homemade yeast yeast rolls to rise every Thanksgiving and Christmas. We can't eat until the rolls are done and they are never done on time. Hashtag hungry for the holidays. Um, hot homemade rolls are the best. <laughs> My mom makes them too. We devour them. Nancy writes in, I have two trees usually, one in the living room, one in the den. I hide two pickle ornaments. Yay. See, there we go. One for the adult children, one for the grandchildren. If you are the one to find the pickle ornament, you get a special present or money. I love traditions. It's so fun. I can't, I don't know about uh, like Christmas but Thanksgiving, the day before Thanksgiving, we always, we make pizza. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, I don't know where that started. Well, a lot of people on Christmas Day will do Chinese food. Any New Yorkers out there? Yes, that's, that's a big, a big thing. thing. Coast. Absolutely. All right, let's check in with Keith, Christine, and Frank yeah. for a look at what they have coming up at the top of the hour. Any traditions for y'all? We always did the, the movie, whatever the big movie yeah. was. Yeah. Which well, a lot of times was James Bond, it seems like. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Die Hard came yeah. out one year yeah. for Christmas. But that was like after you settle down Christmas afternoon, you call all your yeah. friends and say, all right, let's all go to the movie. I love it. Yeah. I love it. We always yeah. opened up one gift as a family on Christmas Eve. Yeah. Around the fireplace. I always loved that yeah. tradition. One of the strangest traditions we have is my wife still uh, lets me cut the turkey, and I'm terrible at, <laughs> at carving a turkey. Still so, after all these yes, years? To me, that's strange because I'm, I'm horrible Maybe at it, so why do you? want me to carve it, but okay, I guess yeah, I'll do I've it. I've also seen pictures yeah. of you and your family in PJs. Yes, yeah, we do do that. Yeah, oh, we, we have pajamas, pajamas. We have, we have brunch and, you know, homemade waffles and, and mimosas. That's and, you know, my hey. kind of tradition. Yeah. I'm coming to Europe. <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're, well, you're invited. You're welcome anytime. So everyone's invited. Yes, everyone's indeed, invited. indeed. Yeah. <laughs> Good yeah. stuff. It's almost here, too. I can't believe it. Wow. I know, I know. Frank, let's talk about the forecast today. Did it wake you up? Did it wake you up this morning? It turned out to be a nice day, though. It woke me up, yeah. Yeah, but it was... But it was, you know what? But when it got to you and when it left you, 30 minutes. It was fast. Yeah, it was, it was fast. quick. Yeah. 30 minutes. That, in fact, here it is. And you can see it really raced through. And then behind it, it's nice and clear out there. Temperatures under that blue sky, perfect Veterans Day weather. 73, 78, 74 in Galveston right now. You'll notice this north wind right about 10 miles an hour. 71 in Conroe, one of the cooler spots. In fact, if you have any kind of plans for this afternoon and evening for Veterans Day, I'm at 74, 72, 68 at 6, 66 at 7. Exact track radar showing this front that went through. There is a secondary front. We'll talk more about this at four o'clock, but that secondary front comes in dry. It's headed right toward Texas, so I'm not ex expecting any rain with it, but it's going to cool us down for Saturday into Sunday. You can see these temperatures from 50 on Friday morning to 44 Saturday and Sunday morning. In fact, Saturday only a high of 66, so some sweater weather for Saturday. It's going to be a chilly evening. I got that dry cold front for Friday, a wonderful weekend, a lot more coming up at four. All right, we'll see you then, Frank. Thank you. And here's a look at some of the other stories we're covering for you at 4 o'clock. We will have a look at some of the Veterans Day events happening around the area as Houstonians honor those who have served our country. Certainly some well-deserved recognitions to all of those men and women out there. Plus, detecting Alzheimer's disease by a blood test. Health reporter Haley Hernandez takes a look at a possible game-changing test that could help those with a family history of the disease know whether they may develop Alzheimer's. And a 105-year-old woman woman has set a world record for her 100 meter dash. 
You guys feel lazy yet? Wow. <laughs> this also apparently is not her first record. This is a story that you do not want to miss coming up at 4 o'clock today. Look at her go. Yeah, I think wow. I remember her from uh, when she did this at, at 100 years of age, and she's still going. Wow, hey, nice. That. Love it. That is awesome. That's yeah. definitely a feel-good story, and it just proves age is just a number. Just, that's all yeah. it is. That's right. all it is. All right, guys. We'll see you at the top of the hour. Thanks so much. We know in honor of Veterans Day, we are taking a look back at a story that truly inspired us and spotlights a local World War II veteran who's proof, again, that age is just a number. And that's right. We love our seniors. After serving as an Army Air Corps member in World War II, Leonard Milholland discovered a passion for aircraft and flying, a passion he continues to pursue today at 97 years young. I'm Leonard Milholland, and I'm the owner of the title Legal Eagle Airplane and the Better Half VW. I built about 14 airplanes, but my mother said I was three years old I had an airplane buzzing around. I've been doing this now for 22 years, selling plans to my airplanes for 22 years, and there's hundreds of sets of plans out there people are building, and I get a lot of exposure on YouTube and, and uh, Facebook, things like that. Everybody wants to buy a set of plans for the Legal Eagle XL because it's, it's the popular one that's getting all the publicity right now. It's a lot of fun. When you leave the ground, it's a real thrill. And you rush down the runway a little bit and you're in the air and it's smoothed out and it, it's really a oh, way I'm flying, I'm flying. <laughs> I was in my teens, I washed cars, got enough money to get a ride in an airplane, and I loved it. And I, I was hooked. The war came along, and I uh, enlisted in the Army Air Corps, and I got to be around airplanes during the whole war. I ended up in Panama in a, in a bomb squadron, a, a third bomb squadron in Panama, in David, Panama. I was responsible for the maintenance on the B-24, and I, when it flew, I flew with it. And there was a, there was a lot, of, lot to do. It, it, was, it was a busy job. And I rode in the top turret with 250 caliber machine guns, and I got to see I got the best view on the best view on the plane. When I look at that picture, I wonder what happened. <laughs> I was fairly good looking in those days. After the war, why raising a family was more important than flying. So after the family was raised, my wife and I started flying again. We went down to the airport, took lessons, and, and bought into an airplane, and we flew all over the United States in the airplane. And I heard they were building an airport out here. In the late 70s, we started building a, building a hangar here on this lot. My wife and I and one friend, it took about three years because we had to do it as we got the money. My wife and I, first wife and I played for about 25 years before she died in 03. And uh, I was single, running around single and didn't like it. I met Donna and the wife I have now, and uh, we were married in 05. Thank you for coming. I met Leonard at the gym at Mary Jo Peckham Park Gym and Katie about a little over three years ago. I started going there. He's always there Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. He always shows up and he's always doing all his exercises and making all of us look bad. <laughs> I thought I was working out with a guy who was a retired vet from like Vietnam War. He came in, I assumed he was about 70, and I, I asked him, I said, I see you've got like a retired Navy cap on. And he said, No, what? He says, No, that's a World War II vet cap. So. I realized I was working out with somebody pretty special. He's a total inspiration to me, the way he um, just communicates with people, he tells jokes. This is my don't get a ticket cap. He's always on it, um, he's sharp for 97 and I'm just very, very thankful to know him and to have him in my life to inspire me every day. Somebody raise the tail back up. Here we go. Leonard always, every day he amazes me, the way he, he is so, he speaks so well, he can talk to people. Just, to me, he's amazing, and I would love to be like that one in 97, that's for sure. You can treat everybody like you want to be treated. That's what I try to do. And he does it so well. Leonard, you are an inspiration to all of us. And what a great example. After losing his first wife, he was able to rediscover a love for, you know, a new wife and also to continue flying. Yeah, and I love his newfound friendships, too, with people that you meet later in life and the impact that he has had on them. Really fantastic. Not many World War II vets left no. out there, so hold them tight. And that...
no ticket cap, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we will have the full story and a link to connect with Leonard on our website, HoustonLife.tv. And keep it right here. Coming up, need a pumpkin-flavored dessert for Thanksgiving? The answer is always yes. Cookbook author Joy the Baker is in our studio today to show you a delicious recipe that's easy to make. Oh, and it's beautiful, too. And as we head to break, let's take a look at more veteran shout-outs from our viewers. The first one is Tisha Rice. She writes in, this is a photo of her father, Norma Wright. Norman Rice, U.S. Army Colonel. In this photo, six of his seven children greeted him as he returned. Wow, an incredible moment to capture. Webb Joseph Davis sent in this picture of his little cousins, Ashton and CJ. Thanks for your service. And Barbara shared a photo of her father, Roy Chastity Jr., who joined the Navy during World War II. Thank you to all of our service members, and keep it right here. Houston Life is coming right back. Back. You know, it all started with a food blog and a passion for baking, but 13 years later, Joy Wilson, a.k.a. Joy the Baker, is now a cookbook and magazine author. She joins us now in studio with an indulgent yet approachable recipe she's known for that's going to be perfect for our Thanksgiving feast. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm a huge fan. I just told you I stalked your Instagram Thank multiple you. times. Judy, she you. just completed her first half marathon here in Houston. Who Congratulations. Knew? Thank you so much. I know you live in New Orleans, okay, but the eight-year-old Joy, was it something that you, you, you know, sought out to be, like, I'm going to be a baker? Uh, well, I, the loophole in my family were health food enthusiasts. Okay. The loophole in my family is if you could make it from scratch, you could eat it. So once I realized that loophole, I was like, I'm a baker now. And I started making brownies and cookies, and, like, there was no stopping me. But, but you're self-taught, right? Yeah, I'm a self-taught baker. I've worked in kitchens, so I'm a professional baker now, and I write cookbooks and magazines, so... Can you believe all of this kind of is going through? I well, mean... Yeah. I mean, right? the amount of butter that I keep in my fridge, I, I'm supposed to be a baker. It's just who I am. I love it. And both of your parents are as well, right? My dad is a fantastic baker, and my mom's a really lovely cake decorator. Really awesome. Yeah. Okay, so I know y your stuff is so good. It's pretty to look at. Your your um, instructions to do it, very simple. I love the magazine as well. Um, but you say this is a really easy dessert that we can do? Yes. The, the non-bakers? Yes, you don't have to be a baker to make okay. this, though my work is to make everyone a baker. You don't have to be a baker to make this because it's part homemade, part store-bought. Ooh, so, outsourcing. Yes, we're I outsourcing. We're delegating. And so, trifles are so pretty. Yes. I mean, it's just so impressive on a table. And you can make them ahead of time. So a trifle is a layer of cake, pudding, and whipped cream. So the cake is store-bought. Super easy. Um, Store-bought pound cake. I, okay. I cubed some up here, but you can cube some pound, some of this pound cake uh, okay. into like big bite-sized pieces. So I would normally put the, cut this down the center and then go. Is that how you would do it? You can do, do that. Or? Yeah, you can do that. Okay. Does There's, that seem weird? No, it doesn't seem weird. Okay. While you're making pound cake cubes, I'm going to do the homemade element, which is making a pudding. And a okay. pudding is pretty simple to make. You'll start with four eggs in a pan. Okay. We have some sugar and cornstarch. The eggs in the cornstarch will thicken the pudding. Okay. And I like making a pudding from scratch because you can flavor it however you want. Oh. So in this case, we're making pumpkin pudding and you can put in as much pumpkin pie spice as you'd like. You know, you can customize it to your yourself. Right. Okay, and so once I've got all of this cut, I'd basically just add this in here, Yeah, right? throw it in the bowl. Okay. And I'm going to start whisking together this pudding. Okay. And Whoa. you want it to get thick. I want it to get thick. That's the consistency that we're going for. Give that a stir. Okay. Um, and that is after it's been cooked and cooled a little bit. So okay. we want to cool it. You don't want to add it once it's, um, if it's too hot. Not really when it's too hot. Yeah, okay. you want to cool it. So I have some vanilla extract and a little bit of salt. And I'm going to stream in some whole milk okay. and add my pumpkin puree too. Mm. And that again, canned puree, right? Oh yeah, canned oh, thanks, puree. Girl. Okay. We do not need to be roasting <laughs> 
pumpkins in the oven when it's already been done for us. I love that. <laughs> okay. Also, it tastes the same. Okay. Let's just be real. I love that. So it's this is a saves time. right. We're saving time. We have like we get to gather again. So we have friends over, family. We're keeping it easy. So what I just put in this pot is pumpkin puree with a little bit of brown sugar and lots of pumpkin pie spice. Can you smell it? I can. I it know. smells so good. It's like it's really good for the soul. It's I I like. was telling you during the commercial break, pumpkin anything is my season. So yeah. I really I want this all year round. You can you can have it. You can make your own dreams come true. Right? You know. <laughs> <laughs> so this milk is a little bit warm. I'm going to add this, and essentially what I'm doing is bringing this to a really low simmer. Okay. And the simmer will allow the cornstarch to do the work of thickening and will help the eggs thicken the pudding as well. And then here we go with the magic of TV yes. and cooling. Yeah. This is what the final product looks like. Too easy, right? I love it. And it's like a pudding. It really is. It yeah. really is. We did it. We did. So Can now I, what? So let me show you how to assemble. Okay. It's super easy. It's just layers. So we'll start with a layer of pound cake. Do you want to throw that in there? Okay. All, the whole Maybe thing? Maybe half of it. Okay. Yeah. There okay. That's good. That's okay. great. Love it. And then I'll spoon on some pudding. Okay. You'll you be on. Make that a oh, I'm on. You'll the be on whipped cream okay. duty. It's hard for me to not eat half of the whipped cream, so I always make extra because it's just so good. So I'll spoon in some of this pudding, and then you'll come right after me. Perfect. I'm gonna let you keep layering. Cream. I want to let people know where you're gonna be. Keep working because you're gonna be at an event for a meet and greet. You can do this Saturday at 11:30 a.m. at Williams Sonoma in Highland Village. Okay, so now there's the event information. This is free, um, and I love that you're gonna be there. That oh, is yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Derek's coming in because while I'm putting in the final layer, again, Perfect. magic of television. We finished. We finished. And Derek is here to eat already. I couldn't help myself. I've been salivating all over <laughs> that side of the studio. How do you like my work? It looks, it looks great. <laughs> yeah. It looks great. Y'all did a great job. We did. Uh, you know what? Not bad. And thank you so much for coming mm. in. Yes. This is delicious. And not too sweet. Mm. Yeah, not too sweet. Home run. Yeah. Very, very I love nice. it. Thanks thank you guys. Very good. For a link to secure the ticket for the meet and greet or for a complete recipe, visit our website, houstonlife.tv. Joy, thanks so much for coming Thank in. you, guys. And thanks for the dessert. Oh, you're welcome. We're going to try this at home. Very good one. <laughs> so good. All right, why don't we check back in with Lauren Kelly, who is getting into the holiday spirit down on the island. Hey, Lauren. Hey, guys. You know, we're at one of the greatest holiday destinations in Texas, Moody Gardens. And coming up next, I'm going to be chatting with a very, very special guest who's going to be stopping by with me. Oh, oh, oh! That guy! I'm gonna get to where he's gonna be right here at Moody Gardens when Houston Life returns. Attractions and holiday festivities happening under one roof right here at Moody Gardens. This is one of the biggest destinations for the holidays in Texas. And I am here with Jerry Hamachek, who's been giving us all the details on this year's holidays. Cheers, we've got our hot chocolate Cheers. now. I've been really <laughs> trying not to drink this, but we have so much to cover because Santa is going to be here doing lots of good things. Yes, yeah, so we kick everything off uh, November 20th okay. and we do it in grand style. So opening ceremonies start at 4 o'clock. Santa parachutes in at he, five o'clock. Parachuting in, is that what you said? This is what we do as a tradition okay. every year. And so he'll do that. And then we also have Santa flip the switch at 6 p.m. and all of the light trail lights up. And that's gonna be really cool because that's gonna be right here on KPRC2 broadcast live. Yes, okay. yes. And so everything kicks off on the 20th and we've got a whole season of fun all the way through January 2nd. So there's lots of different ways that you can meet Santa Claus. In addition to that day, okay. you can have photos with Santa. Yep. You can have uh, breakfast with Santa oh. in December. And you can also just come every night and get your picture taken with Santa. So. Speaking of all those things, food and hot chocolate, I think we've got a very special guy in a red jacket who's been been waiting to come and bring us some cookies. Hi, yeah. Santa. How Thank are you? you. Good to I'm see doing you. great. Are you excited to see everybody here at Moody I Gardens? I'm so excited to see all the boys and girls come down to Moody Gardens and visit me and the elves. And our Christmas Are you building. ready, Santa, to parachute in? Santa has been practicing. <laughs> How do you practice a parachute? I've watched a lot of movies. I've talked to people. So okay. Santa's ready to skydive out of the airplane, parachute open, and land 
and visit the boys and girls. Well, Santa, I will be on the ground with Jerry, making sure I've got lots of video for you safely from the ground, okay? Yes, thank you. That would be very nice. Be very nice. Well, thank you so much. Happy holidays, and thanks for stopping by today. Yes, and happy holidays to you, too, and all you girls and boys out there. I will see you at Moody Gardens. That sounds great. For more info, log on to moodygardens.org or houstonlife.tv. Houston Life is back in just a few minutes. Cheers, you guys. Tomorrow on Houston Life, we are live at the Nutcracker Market at NRG. Oh my gosh, it's going to be so fun. We will be showcasing some of the top merchants and taking a look back at all the fun Houston Life has had over the years. Oh. And finally, the market as we know it is back. That's right. They're shopping out there now. We'll be out there. Hopefully we get to say hello to you at NRG Center. Now let's get a final look at what you had to say about our question of the day. We asked, what's a family tradition that you have, uh, would otherwise be surprised from from, uh, that you do. Uh, Jill writes in, everyone gets a wall calendar for Christmas. It started out when my sister and I were kids. Parents is uh, no longer around, but we still do it and now include my niece and husband. Oh, that's sweet. I wonder if it's a personalized wall calendar because that's a, that's a fun Those are tradition. Cool. Very nice. Carla writes in, several years ago, my husband started to do Thanksgiving gifts to the kiddos. So by this time, they give us a list, three things they would like as a gift. Oh, okay. that's sweet, Carla. Joyce writes in, a walk on the Galveston Beach drinking delicious coffee thankful for Christmas Day that sounds lovely I mean a beach on Christmas is not a bad place to be it's really not a bad place to be anytime <laughs> it's true that's gonna do it for us on this Friday Eve thanks so much for joining us today yeah we'll see you back tomorrow uh, but in the meantime let's hand it off to Keith and Christine in studio a yeah. hi there